Hi, for this video, what I want to do is show you how to find the area under the normal curve using Excel. Okay, uh, whenever you are doing this, I do recommend drawing a picture so you know which way you are trying to find the area so you can visualize approximately what the area should be, whether it should be less than 50%, more than 50%, etc. Okay, so remember with z-scores, z-scores just tell you on a number line how many standard deviations above or below the mean. Um, is in the standard normal distribution. Okay, remember that in the standard normal distribution that it's centered at zero and typically we go out three standard deviations in each direction. So negative 1.78 would be to the left and it would be more or almost two standard deviations below the mean so you're not going to have a whole lot of area for this one. Okay, so this is what we are trying to find is we're trying to find the cumulative area from negative infinity to negative 1.78 in the standard normal curve. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab Excel and with this all you have to do is you would st start by typing equals and you're going to start typing normal and you see that norm distribute dot dist is um, the first thing that co comes up. It will ask you for your x value. In this case our x value is going to be our z-score. And I would just put in negative 1.78, comma, the mean is your next thing. In the standard normal model, the mean is always zero and the standard deviation is always one. And then it's gonna ask you, do you want it to be cumulative or not? And we do want it to be cumulative because we want everything from negative infinity up until we stop at negative 1.78. So we are gonna select true. Okay, typically with the normal distribution, you're going to find a shaded region and not just one exact value. So almost always you will select true for this one. Okay, and then after you close your parentheses, you can hit enter and it will give you your area. And as you can see, it's not a very large area. So the area for this one is approximately 0.375. Okay, sorry, it was 0.0. .0. Let me fit that in there. All right, and if you have to round to so many decimal places, typically four is what we round to. You can always use Excel to help you with the rounding and you can decrease your decimal and then that way you can see that it goes to four decimal places and it will do the rounding for you so you won't get a rounding error if you decrease it down to the four decimal places. For the next one, it asks us to find the area to the left of z equals 0 0.34. In this case, 0 0.34 is positive, so it will be on the right side, and it's less than one standard deviation above the mean, so we would shade right there, and so we're looking for this area. Since this is a positive z-score and we're looking for the area to the left, we know that more than 50% of the area is shaded because at the mean you have exactly 50%. Okay, um, so again, the only thing that we would have to change on this one is our z-score. Our z-score is 0 0.34, so we're going to change the negative 1.78 to 0 0.34. And then when I hit enter, it will give me the answer. And like I said, I knew it was going to be more than 50% because of the fact that it's above the mean and we're looking for the area to the left. All right. For the next two, you're going to have to think about it a little bit more. It's not quite as straightforward. When it's area to the left, you just enter it in as is. Um, with area to the right, the... Um, algorithm, the way that it's set up in Excel, is it does the cumulative area from negative infinity until you tell it to stop. Okay, so for this one, because it says right of 1.23, we're going to be looking for this area up here. And so I know it needs to be less than 50%. So there's two things that you can do. You can either do 1 minus the area to the left, or you can enter the opposite z-score because the area to the left of the opposite z-score is the same as the area to the right of the given z-score. So I will show you that both will yield the same answer. Um, so using the first method, and I'm just going to type it in down here, I would type in equals 1 minus the area to the left, so I would start typing in the normal dot distribution, 
And then I would put in the 1.23. The mean again is zero, the standard deviation is one, and then I do want the cumulative distribution, so I would select true. Close my parenthesis and hit equals, and it gives me 0 0.1093, which makes sense because of the fact that it's gonna be less than 50%. Okay, so using the other one, I could change my z-score to negative 1.23 because the opposite of positive 1.23 would be negative 1.23 and hit enter and notice I get the same answer. Uh, the only difference is that I have this one not rounded so now I just fixed it to where it's rounded to four decimal places but I get the same answer either way. Um, so for when it's area to the right you can either do one minus the area to the left so one minus the normal dot distribution with the given z-score, or you can just find the area to the left of the opposite z-score. So either way, you get the same answer. All right, for the last one using Excel, um, what you are going to have to do is you are looking for between two values. So you're gonna have to do the area of the larger minus the area of the smaller. So area always does have to be positive. Um, it could be zero. It's possible to have a zero area where you barely have anything shaded. Um, but it's always area of the larger minus the area of the smaller. So my smaller z-score would be the negative 1.78. And it's going to be two standard deviations below the mean almost. And the 1.2 would be a little more than one standard deviation above the mean. And so I'm trying to find this area in between. So because the norm dot distribution finds the cumulative area from negative infinity all the way until you tell it to stop, when I plug in the first one, the normal distribution of the 1.2, it's going to give me everything from negative infinity up to that point. Then we're gonna subtract out the smaller area. So basically what we're doing is we're subtracting out this um, value right here, okay? Um, so to type that into the calculator, all you would have to do, and it doesn't matter where you type it, I'm just gonna type over this, so I'm just gonna get rid of that. Uh, Norm.distribution. And then I would put in my larger one, which was 1.2, comma, 0, comma, 1. And I would put true. And then I would close my parentheses, and I'm going to type it again, minus the norm dot distribution. And then I'm going to put in my other value, negative 1.78, 0, 1, and again, I want true. And enter, and 0.8474 would be my final answer. So finding the area in Excel is pretty easy. All you have to do is plug in the values. Um, area to the left is what it finds automatically. If you want area to the right, again, you can do one minus the area to the left or the opposite z-score. And area between, you have to do the area of the larger z-score minus the area of the smaller. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you would like me to cover, please let me know that as well.